So I'm just going to talk, this will be about a five minute look ahead with the idea that hopefully this will also be shown and recorded so people who aren't here can also get a feel of things. Um, and I've written things so that I don't waffle. Okay, so looking ahead is my uh, remit um, within St. Denis and sort of where do we go from here in terms of St. Denis? So today, I don't know if you noticed, we woke with blue sky. Um, I have to say from my point of view, and probably some of you, it was a welcome relief um, to the storms and the winds we've had for the last few days. Um, weather's not that great this afternoon, um, but I think there is hint of better things to come and better weather to come. I think the kind of that sense also is where we're at in terms of where we are as a nation with COVID and all its implications. The sky feels a little bit bluer due to the vaccines and to people's careful behaviour. It's still not great. As someone with the connections in Bolton, I can say that wholeheartedly. Um, and there is still loss and there is still fear and there is still grief around. But there is a sense, I think, of moving on from COVID. So what does it mean for St. Denis Church as we look ahead and ask, where are we to focus? What shape are things to come? Where do we feel God calling us to be and to do? Well, I've done quite a lot of listening, praying, reading, reflecting, untangling and taking stock. You probably won't have noticed me doing any of it, but I have been. I do it stealthily. Um, and I just want to offer for five minutes a sense of a way ahead. We can call it a framework. We could call it a purpose. We can call it a sense of momentum. You might even want to call it a vision, but, you know, let's not overstate this. Um, so first of all, let's start with where we are now. OK, some building blocks. The first building block for us to build upon is the Bible verse that the discipleship group brought to us in the autumn at our last um, APCM. I'll remind you what it is, though it's emerged quite a number of times. I am the Lord, your, the, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. A verse that we felt and still feel is speaking to us. The second building blocks are the four priority areas that have emerged over the last two years through various decisions, discussions, groups and reflections. And the PCC has affirmed these in the last year. The building block to worship, to turn our hearts and minds to God. To deepen, that is to create opportunities to explore and deepen Christian spirituality and faith. The priority to connect, to build friendships and to support one another and to engage, to engage with needs and issues both near and far. We have other building blocks as well. We have us, the people. There's the worshipping community that is St. Denis. Some are long-standing members and some are new. Each of us has distinctive gifts, character, faith. And there's also a whole bunch of fantastic folk who might not worship with us, but have an amazing sense of connection with St. Denis Church. And then there is the groups, the activities, the resources that have developed and changed and are emerging. Those are some building blocks that we've got. In terms of looking ahead then, what do we do with those building blocks and what else do we need to bring into the mix? Well, I want to bring you, first of all, a Bible verse that has been resonating with me over the last few weeks. And whether it's because liturgically and on the lectionary, it's popped up quite a lot. But this has really resonated and spoken again and again to me. The simple phrase and instruction by Jesus at the Great Commission, go and make disciples. So I bring you that, and then I bring you our priorities again. But now I want us to look at them in terms of how they might flow from one to another. Because I think, to be fair, probably all of us here and all of us listening have one that feels more of a natural pull than others. But what would it look like if we see them as flowing from one to another? 
that connect flows into worship and worship flows into connect. Supporting and building relationships flows into people being able to turn their hearts and minds to God and vice versa. That those over time turn to opportunities to deepen. We've already heard Vicky talk about coffee and cake there. And then that flows into engaging, that we connect and engage with local and global issues. Let me just talk through how this can work at different levels. It can flow for us individually as disciples. Maybe you and I have got connections with others through the church. Friendship is a fantastic thing. We're supporting each other. We're cooking meals. We're making phone calls. We're joined, and then also we're joining in worship. So connect and worship are in place. That's discipleship. But then can it flow? Can it grow into deepen? Can I check myself? Can we each check ourselves and say individually, how are we deepening in terms of our encounters with God, no matter where we are on our faith journey? Maybe it's through a prayer square. Maybe it's through a small group. Maybe it's something you're doing that's not actually linked with St. Denny's. But there's a deepening going on. And then from this, is it flowing to engage in some kind of social need or issue or justice that's going on? Maybe engagement in the winter shelter, as some of you've been. Maybe it's about giving regularly to an organization. Maybe it's about encouraging change in your workplace so that people act in a more environmentally responsible way. All of that is discipleship flowing from one to another. We can view it as groups. So whether you're in a support hub or a small group or the youth group or anything like that, it's worth looking at that and saying, where are you at as a group at the moment? Where am I at with my small group, for example? Are we connecting? Are we worshiping? Or are we connecting and then straight deepening without space for worship? What about, are we engaging? Are there some issue that maybe as a group we can support together? And then what about as a whole church? I think we can see, and from what we've heard today and what comes in the e-news and conversations, that there are things happening in each block, some in more than others. Um, but what about flowing things together? Again, coffee and cake's been mentioned, so I could refer to that. Vicky and the team have a real passion for there to be a flow, that from connecting, people somehow have the opportunity to deepen. So as a church, I think we need to look at those flows. How does one thing flow to another? But let me show you this as well. That idea that from engage, things flow back into worship and work and um, connection. I know from my own personal experience, connecting with things like the Sunday Lunch Project and building the connections with people in Feed the Community is shaping how I connect and is shaping how I worship. The flow keeps flowing as we deepen and develop in our journey. A few questions in the last couple of minutes that I want to address. First of all, whoa, yeah, let's look at the site first of all. Yeah, I'll come to that one in a minute. Let me go back. So let me go previous. Okay. So what does this mean in terms of our resources? What does it mean in terms of the site? How does that fit in? Well, there's the little picture in the right-hand side shows where there's cups of tea and houses and buildings and the community and computers. I think this flow happens everywhere. It happens in our homes, in our workplaces, in the local community, in our virtual space, and also on side, on our site, sorry. I think each space matters and we need to think as a church what would it do, what would it look like for us to help this flow of discipleship to take place in places like the work world, in places like our homes? Are there things we can do to help that happen? In terms of the site, I've been struck significantly through COVID that we have been blessed as stewards of a site in the middle of St. Denis community, the old building, the center and the grounds. I've been struck again and again that this place matters to people in different ways, to local people, to hungry people, to worshipping people, to I need some space people. 
And I think, therefore, I'd like to invite us to look at the site through this lens of discipleship flows. How can we build this space and develop it even more to connect and worship and deepen and engage? An example is our handling of the vestry as the discussion between Frank and Vicky and Sue and the gang has just shown that these things, clearing stuff, clears, helps us for lots of reasons, but one, so we can build space so things can deepen from worship. Another question is where does prayer come in? Um, put it simply, everywhere. There is not a separate box for prayer. Prayer is in our worship and it's been brilliant. Thank you everyone who's offered to lead the intercessions in the Sunday services. I've got a long list of people, which is great. Prayer is in our connecting. The book of prayers comes out at Friendlies and at Coffee and Cake and we add into it and then we pray for it on a Wednesday. Prayer is part of our deepening in terms of the small groups, for example. And it also needs to be part of our engaging as well, praying for the different aspects where we are financially and practically supporting groups. We're also praying for them too. Nearly there, guys. Who makes this happen? Um, we all do, with God. I'd love this idea of flows to be part of how we tick. I can create frameworks because those of you who know me well know that I can turn anything into a framework and a diagram. I can create the enthusiasm for it, but I can't make it all happen. In fact, we all need to make it happen. And we've heard tonight as people have talked to the different things of ways that people are beginning to make this stuff happen. It's about all of us getting that sense of flow. So let me give you just a few examples of how people are doing that already. And this has come through me listening, chatting. Um, most of it's not my own idea. Yeah. So here's one example. This is um, Lawn Brook um, Road Care Home. I was chatting with Robert, who you'll see on the screen um, when we're all on the all screen view, who's joined us from Alton and ex is exploring older people ministry as a lay minister. And we've begun a conversation um, invited by the Older People Ministry of Carraway to look at how a chaplain presence can be in and part of Lawnbrook community. So that's about connecting and that's about worshipping. Another example. Well, we need to be looking at our worship and the plan for services. So as we look at that in the coming weeks, how does that flow? What does that look like? Coffee and cake, we've already mentioned, that passion for deepening. We really need to look at the best ways, are there courses or opportunities to help people deepen? And we've already got brilliant from um, Carol mentioning about the library, but are there also particular courses that would be good for people to do? Lizzie mentioned the other day, she didn't probably didn't notice I heard this, she said she wants to look at how um, RISE, the youth group, can engage and get involved in local issues. And then my final example, the Global and Local Mission Group. We met the other week to talk and we've identified four priorities that we'd like the church, and we're going to bring this to the PCC next time, to kind of recognise as being our focus for engaging. It is global engagement, hence the world picture. It is making disciples. It is environmental stewardship and it is local empowerment. And in terms of where we continue and develop support, we think that those are good priority focus areas in terms of engage. So, final slide, guys. I hope you followed this okay. There's our flows now, our priorities connecting to one another. And there's the passage, go and make disciples. But I finish also with bringing us back to the verse for the year that the discipleship brought, group brought us to. There was the phrase in it, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And what strikes me as a thought is this, can this be us? Can we be a river of discipleship in the desert? Is this what it means to be St. Denis in all its calling and all its fullness?